receivers play well. Devin Funches has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes and, and making getting those extra yards. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of truck sticking people out there? It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. <laughs> Oh, Cam Newton. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Team, and this is Football and Nonsense. That was the clip heard around the NFL world as Cam Newton embarrasses himself yet again at the podium. This time he didn't even have a Super Bowl loss to pin it on. This was after a win, and a win over the defending champion, New England Patriots. This wasn't immediately following the game. This was a press conference this week that was held, in which case a young lady reporter a young woman, I, I, you know, I'm not going to try to be overly PC. I feel like he has pretty much gotten all the attention as far as sexism and feminism and whatever other isms there are go uh, for the the current time that I, I can get a little bit of, you know, laxation here <laughs> as far as cut me some slack on if I screw up the proper terminology. But nonetheless... Cam Newton and his uh, at-the-podium moments are ones that, uh, well, there seems like there's a, a golden one every season. Whether it's what he wears or what he says, this time it was what he said. And <laughs> spin it however you want. Like, if I'm Cam Newton, I'm looking back at this because I'm sure he's had to look back at it a couple hundred dozen times by now. But if I'm looking back at this, I'm thinking, man, I screwed up. <laughs> like, you can apologize your ass off or something like that. But the reality is, is one, we live in a world of social media where not only does news travel fast, damage is done and it is done even faster. So, Cam Newton, the damage has been done. You will reap what you sow. And I, I have a feeling if it was... We, we've had the, the likable discussion on the show so many times now um, that if certain players that had gotten in trouble for something that they said or did, if they were more likable, then we'd be a little bit more inclined to give them benefit of the doubt. If Russell Wilson said that, if Jordy Nelson said that, um, if Gronk said that not nearly the kind of reaction that we're seeing and and those three for different reasons one because uh for a guy like russell wilson he never says anything that can really come back to haunt him he is the ever-loving programmable you you type it talks quarterback right he's the king of of the podium and not getting himself in hot water with what he says because he gives you those automated responses that you have to touch one for English to get through to. Jordy Nelson, though, we don't hear a lot from a guy like him. He's very likable in Green Bay, and it would probably come as a shock to hear something like this come out of his mouth. And so we would probably be like, okay, what did you mean? And then upon explanation, we'd be like, oh, okay, we get it. And then Gronk, <laughs> Gronk is a guy who really doesn't hold back at all. And he has his crews and his party bus and everything else. That If he were to say something like that, I almost think that we would, would shrug it off because it's Gronk. And he doesn't censor himself. Now, we don't know Gronk is a sexist kind of guy, but he is uh, a ladies' man, right? So when it comes to a comment like this, only Cam Newton... And a handful of others are going to catch as much scrutiny as Cam Newton is right now. Have Richard Sherman said this? My God, <laughs> unleash the hounds. It, there'd be blood in the water. And there already is, but you get my point. If you're a likable person, you, you can usually beat the fast-paced, hard-hitting, ruthless media that is today's world of sports. Uh, uh, plain and simple. But if you're not, you're dead. Uh, you're dead in the water. You really are. And Cam Newton's finding that out right now the hard way. 
And with that, of course, that, that's really the only headline for today. But, of course, today's episode, I'd like to remind you all, is brought to you by the good folks at MyBookie.ag. Go to MyBookie.ag today and place your bets because they are the world's leader in online betting and gambling. If you're watching the games, it's time to start making some money. MyBookie is the industry leader for website as far as they hook you up for all of your betting needs and with that their and with their great odds fast payouts and decades of experience you can bet with confidence your team doesn't even have to win they just need to cover the spread what are you waiting for lay down the cash and win big today or if you know your team sucks like me i'm a niners fan or if you're a browns fan or a chargers fan or a giants fan then do yourself a favor and bet against them (laughs) because if they lose you'll make money and if they win you're still happy so where do you go well go to mybookie.ag and where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on mybookie.ag and that's why i'm urging you to make your way there because i trust them but you don't have to take my word for it check them out yourself they have in-game live betting and a mobile site that makes wagering on the go easier than ever. You can also check out their online casino if you'd rather just play a few hands of blackjack and or roll the dice in craps. Now, uh, mybookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 100% bonus if you use my promo code, The Fan Show, to activate the offer. Visit mybookie.ag. Today, you play, you win, you get paid. And with that, that brings us to today's headlines. There's not a whole lot to be had with headlines today. Wednesday is a rather slow day in the NFL, unless, of course, Cam Newton takes the podium. Then, hey, (laughs) all bets are off. But it is Fantasy Wednesday here on The Fan Show, and, of course, that means... Now, one of my resident fantasy experts will be joining me in about 10 minutes, and we're going to figure out a way to help salvage your fantasy season. And I say that, and I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of people out there that maybe want advice to help sustain their so far successful fantasy season. But we don't like those people. I don't, because (laughs) out of six leagues, I think four of them I'm 0-4 in. Maybe I'm only 0-4 in three of them. I do think I got my first win in one of them last week, but I'm two and two, one and two, or I'm two and two, one and three, one and three, and then zero and four, in the rest. And it's just shouldn't be that way. The team that when I shared my fantasy football teams, once the draft was over for all of them, I said, "Hey, which one's going to the championship?" One of the teams that's zero and four was the one voted most likely to get me there. A team that has Aaron Rodgers and Antonio Brown. And no, this isn't as a result of a trade or anything. This was a result of the draft. You don't trade those guys away. <laughs> the team is 0-4. So um, Brandon Raper is going to come on, and he is going to try to help me as well as anyone else suffering from the 0-4 blahs because week five is pretty much it. I've heard stories of people starting 0-4 and still making their championship. A lot of people... 0 and 4 means that the best that you can finish is probably 9 and 4 before your playoffs start. Others may be 8 and 4, but so clearly you can have a winning record and there is playoff hope yet because Dalvin Cook just went down the other day and I'm not wishing injury on anyone or for anyone in the world of fantasy, but I'm just saying, you know, shit happens and <laughs> as as we saw. So, with the uh fantasy season in full force as well as the nfl season we like to take these wednesdays and and drop some knowledge on you give you some advice brandon has been in the process of moving from uh illinois to florida so he did not have an article for waiver wire targets this week so we're just going to drill him today when he comes on the show we're going to ask him all those fantasy questions of course you can tweet it at me at fan show official during this episode if you have a fantasy question And then, of course, there is the chat feature on Spreaker.com if you'd like to join in this evening's conversation. Hockey started tonight. That's right. It is Face-Off 2017. (laughs) 
And I say that because this is a huge moment for the fan show, <laughs> because normally I'm football or bust, hence football and nonsense, and a lot of people think that WWE is, uh, there's, there's no better definition of nonsense than uh, <laughs> man opera, but hey, I love it. I really do. Uh, and a lot of people like WWE too, so clearly it's a market worth tapping into, and I feel that I've done that fairly well. But football and nonsense, um, my sport is football. I love the indoor game, although there's been quite a bit of chaos happening so far this offseason. <laughs> uh, a tug-of-war, I guess if you want to call it that, to the point where I'm ready to just yell, for the love of God, merge already. Because the CIF and the IFL, which is Champions Indoor Football and the Indoor Football League, pretty much are going tit for tat as far as uh, exchanging blows when it comes to which teams are going to play for them. Uh, it was officially announced, okay, that's how much weight there is for uh, apparently these moments in in the minor league versions of major sports because you don't have this kind of problem in, in the NFL, which I guess is one of the few blessings that the NFL has for its fans, um, but Teams do move, um, and with that are broken hearts and then a, a unsuccessful endeavor, <coughs> L.A. Chargers. But with the indoor game, so last year there were 10 IFL teams, and two of those were expansion teams. So you had the Salt Lake Screaming Eagles. They were a new team. And then you had, uh, what was the other expansion team? Was it the Colorado Crush? No, it wasn't. Anyway, so you had the Spokane Empire, Sioux Falls Storm. Oh, the Arizona Rattlers. They weren't an expansion team. They got them from the AFL. So you had two new teams after losing two teams, Billings, the Billings Montana Wolves and the Tri-City Fever. So you break even. You have ten teams still. It's pretty good. Two, two conferences and or divisions, however you want to say that. Um, and a pretty good makeup as far as uh, geographically with a few outliers being Spokane and Arizona. So you have Spokane Empire, Arizona Rattlers, Colorado Crush, Salt Lake, Screaming Eagles. And then you had the Sioux Falls Storm, Wichita Falls, Nighthawks, Green Bay Blizzard, Nebraska Danger, and wow, who am I missing? I completely just blanked on, on oh, the Iowa Barnstormers. Of course, sorry, Barnstormers fans, my home away from home. So there's your 10 teams, um, and you have the defending IFL champion Sioux Falls Storm who have won it like seven times in a row, and they're going for eight, but Arizona says, nah, -uh, not on my watch, and they win. Well, now all of a sudden there's rumblings that Wichita Falls, due to travel reasons and to save money, are going to jump to the CIF because uh, in the IFL they're the only Texas team, but in the CIF they would be one of, uh, I believe, four CIF teams in Texas. That made sense. So they made an announcement um, way after it was leaked that they were going to. And, of course, the announcement even came after uh, the CIF had a press conference announcing the resurrection of one of their old teams, the Quad City Steamrollers. Now, um, with the Sioux Falls Storm, though, now we're hearing rumors that they might jump and uh, rekindle some old rivalries with a few other uh, you know, Dakota teams that are in the CIF currently. So they make this big press conference, this spectacle ordeal about, hey, we've thought long and hard about it, we're going to move. Well, after that, the IFL decided to go ahead and take two CIF teams, the Bloomington Edge and the West Michigan Ironmen. So what was five is now seven because Spokane Empire folded, Salt Lake City decided, nah, we're, we're done, and the Colorado Crush uh, are waiting to see if someone will purchase their team. So what was 10 is now 5, is back to 7, which was the golden number that I picked, but hey, it looks like we're right back to, to uh, either 9 or 10, because uh, I'm hearing that Wichita Falls might come back to the IFL, and it was announced today, breaking news that the Sioux Falls Storm are, in fact, coming back to the IFL. And this, I, I don't know if this is going to get a press conference or what, but you think something's official, and then it's not, and, and this is the offseason of 
what is minor league sports. But I love it. I really do. Because once kickoff starts the, and you're underway, there, there's not a whole lot of changes. There's just, you know, competitive football had at a level below the NFL. Now, because these guys don't have NFL money, it, it's a bit harder to be consistent and to make the fans and players and front office happy. So these guys work with what they do. But, uh, man, it has been quite the roller coaster ride over the last couple of days. <laughs> but I can't wait. I can't wait till February because that's when the IFL season and CIF seasons are going to start. And I, I can't wait to see where we're at at that point. Right now, I'm pretty much in the mindset that I won't believe anything until kickoff, pretty much, or until the schedules come out. Because there's so much being talked about paperwork and when it was filed, when it was signed, as far as who is obligated to play where and who's going to end up playing where. It's a mess that I don't want my hands in. They're having the uh, the league meetings right now in Las Vegas. But, yeah, that is uh, that is pretty much the world of football outside of the NFL right now. And so hockey has started tonight. So football or bust normally, and then my secondary sports, if it isn't football related, either arena, indoor, or whatever the case may be, I guess you could say basketball once their playoffs start, but I'm not a fan of basketball just because it seems like it's the same two teams in the postseason every year, and that that's not entertaining to me. I realize that it's competitive, but it's not entertaining to me, especially if you're not a fan of either of those teams. And in Washington, we don't even have a damn team anymore. Uh, closest we get is, I guess... Portland, or if you really want to go there, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, baseball, I, I, I used to be able to play it, not well, uh, but I, I can't sit through nine innings of what I view as playing catch. And then, of course, uh, you have hockey, which I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get into something that fast-paced and learn the rules on the fly, but we're going to give it a go. So right now, the 2017 back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champion Pittsburgh Penguins are hosting my St. Louis Blues. And I say that because um, I'm going to follow the Las Vegas Golden Knights on their inaugural season this year. But I feel it's noteworthy to say that uh, I wanted to kind of dip the toe into the shallow end of the pool the last few seasons. And I chose the St. Louis Blues because I think that their logo is hands down probably one of the single best in all of sports. So... There's that quick roundup of headlines, and of course, with those headlines, speaking of Las Vegas, I didn't talk about it at all on yesterday's show, because what's really left to say? Um, a horrific tragedy in Las Vegas, and of course, this is coming shortly after there was a school shooting here in pretty much my own backyard uh, at a high school that I know very well that I had friends that went to, and it's, it's such a sad time for the country, for the world, and I want to give you guys a chance to escape from that for 60 minutes, three days a week. So uh, I appreciate all of you who listen. I'm sorry if sometimes I come across as insensitive or oblivious um, or heartless when I don't touch on certain, um, you know, major issues that are staring everyone else in the face and blowing up everybody else's timeline. But this is football and nonsense, and sometimes I feel like even if I talked about something serious, I wouldn't necessarily be taken serious anyway. So rather than risk someone calling me out saying that I'm making a joke or light of a serious matter, I just choose to. I, I will acknowledge it in my own way, and that's what I've done with Las Vegas. Thoughts and prayers for them, but really the world just needs some healing, and I hope that we can get that. And with that, we have come to the point of the show where I will welcome my first guest guest my only guest my fantasy guru brandon raper on the show don't go anywhere fan nation we will be right back with more after this you're listening to the fan show your home for all things football and nonsense my special guest tonight farouk farouk welcome he's no expert but here's the thing football and nonsense is what he brings sports talk with a twist it the Fan Show! Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am. 
but the one percent do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons. Like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man, Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy. Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like, Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, Fan Nation, happy Fantasy Wednesday, and with me now, you know him, and he has some great fantasy knowledge he's about to drop. Welcome back, Brandon. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, other than, you know, my entire team has destroyed this week, but other than that, pretty good. Yeah, and I am owner of a team that has Aaron Rodgers and Antonio Brown that is sitting at 0-4, and and I thought for sure I'd get my first win last week, and I haven't. So I have heard the stories from people. Hey, I started out 0-4, and I still made my postseason, hell, even my championship. But I haven't heard of a story of someone starting out 0-5. So help salvage (laughs) our season, Brandon. What do you got for us going into week five? Uh, Sure. So I I would uh, be optimistic, sure. You can make playoffs. I believe in you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So this this week – was uh, I, I almost called it. So last week in our article about waiver wire, I said, hold on, don't use your position, don't use your fab, don't use anything. Just just hold on because something will happen eventually. That's going to happen in the NFL every year. And this was the end all of weeks that we've seen so far. Maybe not as bad as last year, but all Cook owners are horribly sad. Um there is a serviceable, serviceable backup, Latavius Murray. Uh, he was okay on the Raiders. He at least had a thousand yard season one time. Um, but this Viking line is terrible. Uh, I I don't have a lot of faith in him, but you know he's he's a solid waiver wire pickup and someone that uh, you're just gonna have to hope and trust can do something. Um, some of the statistics for Cooks are are actually insane. And I'm so, I'm literally crying that I lost him this week. Um, but he's had 13 broken tackles and averaged almost three yards after contact. Uh, there's not a whole lot of other running backs that can do that, and Murray is is definitely not one of them, <laughs> to, to say the slightest. Yeah, it's a heartbreaker if you're an owner of Dalvin Cook to lose him. Not not just lose him, but lose him that way. You know, we're a quarter of the way through the season. He's one of the top running backs in the league, and he is a rookie. And if you didn't, for some reason, draft Kareem Hunt, which I know a lot of people uh, that didn't, then it was like, well, who who are you left with? Because obviously Ty Montgomery had a rib injury, not that you want to rely on a Green Bay running game of all things, but Marshawn Lynch has not produced. Adrian Peterson has not produced, and that's putting that one very kindly. Uh, the Seahawks running back situation seems to kind of have sorted itself out now. But you, you look around the rest of the league, and aside from – C.J. Anderson, who Jamal Charles is almost getting as many, you know, uh, as making a, as much of an impact as he is. It's like, who else do you have at running back? You know, it's it's chaos. Yeah, this this year is really weird. So, um, in in multiple aspects. So this year is actually, even after all that's been said, this is the year of the running back, which seems uh, surprising after everything that we've seen over the past four years, five years with all the rules for cornerbacks, what they can and can't do. Um, typically it's been a wide receiver league for, for several years, but this, this year is very different. Um, last year at this time, I believe the numbers were the amount of wide receivers that have hit a hundred plus yards by this time last year was 42, either 42 or 44. And right now we only have 25. <laughs> wow. So wide receivers are 
are not producing at the amount that they were last year. Um, running backs are touching the ball a lot more. Uh, that I mean, there, there's so many things that could align with that. There's a lot better corners in the game currently, so it's some teams it's impossible to throw on. Uh, and there's just a lot of bad quarterbacks, to be completely honest. Um, but even after all these injuries, it, it seems like running back is the way to go. Um, and a lot of them are, are just glorified wide receivers. So Cohen, Kamara, um, I mean, the list goes on and on of people that are technically running backs, but should be started in the wide receiver slot. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of people have been very much, um, it, you, it seems like you get a good running back and then you maybe handcuff them, but yet all of a sudden <laughs> the handcuff is almost outperforming the primary and we're seeing that situation in Washington in Denver and then of course Chicago where we have the split shares Howard Cohen Thompson and uh, Fat Rob and then uh, as we mentioned earlier CJ Anderson and Jamal Charles so other than uh, I guess if you're a big PPR guy Christian McCaffrey is your is your you know golden egg lane goose your your prize possession but if you're not in ppr then it's what it's it's fournette and it's hunt because i really can't think of any other running back that has been paying dividends consistently week in and week out so if you're somebody who just lost dalvin cook like what what are you looking for out of a running back now then Oh, man, that's so tough. Yeah, so I, I would also add Gurley into that list. Yes, okay, um, I completely forgot about Gurley. I meant to mention him, but yes, you are yeah, on that. And so him and Bell are actually almost identical statistics. So they've touched the ball 87 and 86 times. Uh, they've both been targeted about 25 times in the passing game. I don't know how long they'll hold up doing that, but, man, they, they've just been beasts this year. Um, as far as if you've lost Cook, and let's say you didn't get Murray because your waiver wire was wonky. You weren't you weren't in the right place at the right time. There are a couple of people with upsides. Uh, Kamara is definitely the one that I would target first and foremost. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I said uh, I like his involvement. I like the amount of snaps he's getting, but him and Breeze never appeared to be on the same page. Uh, I remember week two, he would want to run a wheel route and uh, just didn't look like they were on the same page. He was barely missing him. Breeze was getting close, but you know, couldn't, couldn't pull it off last week. He caught, uh, I think it was 10 targets. <laughs> I mean, it was against the dolphins, but that is, that's the kind of production that you've got to look for when your major producer goes down and not to boast at all. But I did predict Andre Ellington being the person to own, uh, and the Cardinals, he, I think he was targeted 14 times last week. Yes. That's like Andre Hopkins numbers. That's that's <laughs> absurd. Like, he should not be targeted that much. And Palmer's been having a pretty good year. I still don't trust his offensive line. That team is not going to run the ball at all. That is someone else that I'm picking up uh, if I have the chance. And if I don't have the chance for either of those, uh, I think right now is the time to try and trade. Um, a lot of players are in bye week hell. A lot of players got hurt. There's a lot of potential people that you can pick up for cheap uh, that you may not have been able to before. And one of those people that I'm personally targeting is Amir Abdullah. So he's always had this potential, but he had butterfingers and just fumbled all the time, and the Lions didn't really trust him. And then you had Riddick over there catching everything possible. But now it seems that they're they're really pushing towards Abdullah's way and letting him catch out of the backfield more. So that is a player that I'm targeting who's getting 18, 20 touches a game uh, on, a, on a pretty dang good good football team. Okay, so let's go around the different positions in fantasy since we're uh, a quarter of the way through the NFL season, but we're definitely more than that through the fantasy season. So... Yeah, quarterback. Uh, now, all the good names for a segment like this are taken. I'm, I'm feel like it's buy or sell, or maybe enjoy the ride, or, or pull out now would would be something clever for for the show. But either way, 
Um, these are guys that moving forward through the season, you know, uh, are you a believer or, or a doubter in their ability? So for quarterback, um, I, I feel like Alex Smith probably doesn't need to get brought up. But um, Jake Cutler reunited with Adam Gase. He had a good first outing, but since then, not so much. And uh, it's sort of uh, garnered a lot of criticism, understandably so. He's Jake Cutler. But they do have Jay Ajayi, who has been um, in kind of a non-impactful role. So moving forward, as far as if you're a guy that doesn't own you know, the big four, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, uh, I guess even Alex Smith could be up there as well right now because he's having mm-hmm. sort of an MVP caliber season. But is is Jay Cutler, is, is is he past the worst or should you get out now? Oh, man, that's tough. So as a Bears fan, I've had to watch him play for uh, several years, uh, and he's never been fantasy viable, even when he had – Brandon Marshall, and he had Alshon Jeffrey, and he had Martellus Bennett. He was never a viable uh, quarterback. So part of it is his ability to throw interceptions very, very well. <laughs> uh, the other part is, um, you know, randomly he'll get you 80-yard touchdown. But uh, I'm not the kind of person that relies on that. But the weird thing is is Cutler is a gold mine for his wide receivers. Um and, and I don't really understand why <laughs> they throw so much when they have a Jai in the backfield. They just throw so entirely much. You've got Landry, you've got Parker, you have all these players um, that are really succeeding in PPR at the very least. They're, they're not scoring touchdowns because the Dolphins average six points a game, I think. Um, but they're getting the catches. They're getting the targets. Um so for their receivers, I, I'm pretty big on all of them. Parker, maybe not so much quite yet. Uh, I like Landry's floor more than Parker. Um, but for Cutler, no way. I, I would not look his way in a million years. All right. And with, obviously, the loss for however long with Mariota and Carr, it becomes an even you know shallower pool to dip into as far as a quarterback solution, whether we're entering the bye week stretch for a lot of owners out there or uh, who are looking for maybe a rest of the season solution because their first pick for quarterback didn't uh, work out all that well. A lot of people I feel probably already picked him up. He has been trending upward, but are you going to enjoy the ride or pull out now on Deshaun Watson? Uh, Yes. So I also lost Carr this week on top of also losing Montgomery. So it's, it's been a brutal week for me. Yeah. Um, but I was one of the people who picked up Watson. And uh, two weeks ago, I even had him on my list of players that that need to be watched and, and probably should be picked up before they go off. Uh, I wasn't expecting five touchdowns, <laughs> but, um, you know, now you see his ceiling. You know, th- those are Cam Newton prime stats, and, and you're not going to see that anywhere else because his floor – involves running touchdowns, which, uh, depending on your league scoring, is six points instead of four. You know, that that's that can be a major factor uh, where yards rushing are also scored at a higher premium than passing. Okay. The reason that I bought on him, though, is that team is letting him throw. They are not holding back at all. So he's almost had 300 yards in back-to-back games. He's throwing 35 times a game. Uh, Fuller just came back, so that's only going to make him better. And Hopkins has pulled off like 10 pass interference calls in four weeks or something. So his his receivers are good, and they defend their quarterback when the ball's in the air as well, uh, which will kind of limit his mistakes. But, man, that upside, I, I'm buying in on that all day. He, he has more points than Breeze currently, so... Uh, I can I can get down with that kind of production. Okay, so then moving on to the running back position, we already kind of touched on this, but let's talk about uh, whether we should be concerned or happy with where we're at if we own these two individuals. First one uh, hasn't given us much to enjoy throughout the season so far, uh, and I really wish that would not have. I guess it would have been the otherwise uh, before this major injury, but. 
Derek Carr is now out. So are you going to enjoy the ride with Marshawn Lynch, or should you pull out now because we have seen his best and those are far behind him? Lynch is a tough one. So when I, I, I watched all of his plays for every week uh, because going into the season, I, I was hesitant to rank him high at all um, just because he's a little bit older. He took a year off, new system, all, all that good jazz. But he looked really good week one. With Carr out of the picture and with Cooper not able to catch anything, um, I'm pretty high selling Lynch uh, and not really trusting him to start. Um, I mean, there's even some backups that, that I would rather start than Lynch at this point, which is kind of sad. Um, you know, I, I would be more confident, I guess, starting Chris Thompson. Um, Man, starting Cohen, starting Kamara, even maybe Giovanni Bernard. I mean, it's getting into sketchy territory there, but he is not someone that I would like to start in the next few weeks. I would need to see what in the world the the Raiders do game plan wise before I feel confident even looking at him in my lineup. Okay, that's a fair point. You know, I'm not going to argue that just because. Hey, you know, I, I get it. I was one of the guys that, that bit on Marshawn Lynch. I, I figured the homecoming in Oakland would be a, a nice change of scenery and change of pace for him and that he was going to dominate. But, man, it's been uh, disappointing, and that's too bad because, uh, you know, I was excited about Marshawn being on a team that doesn't have to face mine twice a year. So next <laughs> on the running back list, though, uh, now this was one game. It was particularly one play of one game that the defense seemed to be a bit confused about the rules or, or what was happening. But Powell, um, he was a guy that was pretty much high on everyone's list, especially in PPR leagues going into the season, but has since been irrelevant. Have we seen uh, the spark of a new Powell in the backfield, especially with Forte's absence now? Yeah. So his ceiling is literally going to be attached to what Forte's status is. Um, and I believe this exact same thing happened last year too, right? Where, uh, Powell started taking off at the end of the year. He was running hard. He was averaging a ridiculous, yep. uh, yard per carry. Uh, and then again, in the beginning of this year, it was barely split carries with Forte. Forte is for some reason, they're running back one again. Forte goes down, and now here's Powell showing off again, you know, <laughs> the ridiculous amount of speed that he has. Um, so it's someone that I'm buying into. I love his ability to play. I think the Jets personally are a lot better than uh, people are led to believe. You know, there's a couple of rookies that are playing extra, I don't even know, just outstanding defense over there. Uh, Jamal Adams, the safety that they picked up, who I wanted the Bears to pick up. But um, you know what? I get to watch Trubisky this week, so maybe it'll be worth it. Uh, that that team's a lot better than people think. Um, and the inclusion of Austin Severian Jenkins may just be enough to keep them in the game, which is all you can ask for for a running back. Because once the game gets out of hand, you know, there go your your touches, and there goes your running back production. All right, so then the wide receiver position. This one has been a tricky one this year, but for a lot of people, this first individual, we expected what he did week four to be the case weeks one, two, three, and four. And that is the new addition to the Washington Redskins, Terrell Pryor. Your thoughts on him? Are you going to enjoy the ride or pull out now? Uh, well, I guess there's a difference. Um not enjoying the ride because I, I don't trust his ability at all. He's still one year removed from being turned into a wide receiver. But I don't think anybody's going to buy him for the value that, that he puts off. So he's not a trade target that people are going to look for. You can't trade him for anything. Uh, but I don't want to start him almost ever. <laughs> um <laughs> So, so there's a major difference between that team this year and this year, and that name is pretty much just Deshaun Jackson. And he's had a profound effect on quarterbacks. He makes them so much better. He stretches the field, which I didn't really think was that big of a, a deal until I saw 
Cousins stats without Deshaun Jackson, and he is not a great quarterback in those situations. Um, so I, I'm just not a big fan of Pryor in general. I'm not a big fan of the Redskins' ability to run the ball and then to keep the ball. And with Josh Norman hurt, that just makes it even worse. Um, so no, I'm I'm not starting him. And I'm not trading him because I don't think he's going to get anything. All right, then the last one for wide receiver. Now, so much of a wide receiver's success is based on the relationship that he builds with his quarterback, and that seems to be the case even though it's only been one game. So with that, I ask you, Will Fuller, your thoughts on him with young star quarterback Deshaun Watson? Yeah, so if you owned Will Fuller last year, you uh this is the exact same kind of game that you could expect then the following week he would have one catch for seven yards <laughs> this is uh i mean he's a boomer bust kind of player um kind of what people would have expected out of mike wallace and deshaun jackson this year that they're not getting um he could win you a week he could lose you a week that, that's so tough but again they're letting watson throw uh, their running game is, is pretty decent, and the fact that Watson looked his way in, in some red zone targets, that he's got some upside. Uh, I would rather have him over you know, Ted Ginn, Mike Wallace, Deshaun Jackson, some of those, those late-round pickups, uh, even some of the Arizona wide receivers, because that's, that's just a tricky situation. Um, I would stash him on my bench for sure. Uh, a bye week starter, he may win you the game by himself. Uh, I, he, he may also lose you the game. It's a tough call. <laughs> okay, last one then. Um, we're going to look at tight ends. Now, this this position has almost been so hard that I, I had a hard enough time coming up with two names to, to even put on this list. <laughs> but, but the first one is a guy that I owned in several leagues because when I heard what team he was joining and I remember what this quarterback – was able to do with the tight end position in previous years, I figured what better to have than an experienced member of this position, and that is Martellus Bennett in Green Bay. He's been trending upward. He had his best game of the season, still only an impactful player, if you call it that, in PPR formats. But your thoughts on the Green Bay tight end? Uh, so, yeah, uh, the tight end situation has been terrible this year. Bennett, um, no, I'm I'm selling him. Um, there are two players, though, that I – I'll even say three players now, maybe. Um, two players that I'm majorly looking at. The first one is Charles Clay. I have him in all of the leagues that I'm in. Uh, he is owned in quite a, quite a bit of the leagues, and the players that have him on his team, they, they aren't going to trade him at all. Um, but going back eight games, dating back to last year, uh, he has scored 81 points and that's in standard. That's not even in PPR. Uh, he's scoring points that are pretty close to Gronkowski numbers. Um, and he's getting targets like crazy. Now that Jordan Matthews went down, I'm even more of a buyer of his. The other one that I've been putting on my waiver wire list every single week is, uh, Evan Ingram of the New York Giants. He's averaging more than seven targets a game, which is absolutely outrageous for a tight end, at least this year. Um, he's someone whose floor is 45, 50 yards, seven targets. Uh, and I think his, his red zone targets are just going to keep going up the more that, um, that they figure out that run game, that that defense comes together, that Eli Manning stops being terrible um you know he's he's gonna figure it out but the fact that he's getting those targets that's really all you can ask for in a tight end i mean you're going from uh, let's see you're going from someone like clay and ingram who are seeing 30 targets over the year for four weeks to i don't know ben watson who has like 15 to 20 you know but those are drastically different and those ceilings and those floors are brutal. Um, Mercedes Lewis has 62 yards with three touchdowns. Uh, <laughs> and people picked him up this week because of that one game. You know, that's not what I'm looking for. You got to have some consistency um, in, a, in a tight end position that usually doesn't exist. But those two players alone, 
uh, are big, big situations. The other one that I'm looking at and I wouldn't feel comfortable starting quite yet is Austin Hooper. Um, this is all predicated on if Sanu is hurt after their bye week. If Sanu is hurt, I am starting him 100% of the time. Okay. And that is a name that I've heard a lot, but people have not yet pulled the trigger on. One that I was curious about, because you already covered Watson and Ingram, which Ingram needs to thank his lucky stars that he was not on the boat with the rest of them because they haven't won since that picture was taken. (laughs) But uh, uh, Jesse James of the Steelers, he's kind of a every other week player. And I've seen those before where you, you get 12 weeks into the season, you look at their stat line and it's like 22 points, five points, 18 points, zero points, 23 points, nine points. Like it's just, it's every other one. And I I know that Antonio Brown (laughs) had, had a bit of a, a concern with Ben Roethlisberger's decision making when it comes to his reads, but uh, tight ends have always been good in Pittsburgh, and he was a good one last year. But of course, 2017 is not 2016. Your thoughts on James? Uh, James is, I, I think James fits that exact mold of the tight end that you're talking about. So he's a guy that he will have his looks just because they'll be in the red zone pretty frequently. Yeah. Um, I also don't trust Roethlisberger. Uh, I, I've watched several of his games this year completely. One, because they played the Bears, and then the other because I own Martavis Bryant, and I wanted to see what in the world was going on with that. Uh, he he almost looks cutler so he's just <laughs> launching the ball everywhere, right? So he's just gunslinging it around. Um, he's gotten a little better over the past weeks. Uh, I... I'm still convinced that they will run the ball a lot in the red zone. And if not, they will look for a taller receiver or that Brown connection. Um, He will be someone that will, yeah, he'll either get you 20 points or two. He's going to (laughs) get three receptions for 20 yards and two touchdowns or nothing. Um, So it's, he's that boomer bust tight end that most people are, are used to. Yeah, he's a, he's a feast or famine guy, and that's very dangerous in the world of fantasy. Mm-hmm. But that pretty much covers all the positions uh, that I wanted to talk about. And, of course, I thank you for your uh, infinite knowledge of the world of fantasy football. But uh, you're welcome when it comes to uh, the new era in Chicago that is the Trubisky era because that was one of the more prouder moments I've had. I called that shot down to the game, and Glennon... I saw that. Glennon almost ruined it for me, the bastard, because when they pulled that upset against the Steelers, I was like, son of a, if if, if he ruins this for me, because I thought for sure they were going to be 0-5 going into that Monday night game, and I said, here's mm-hmm. an 11-day stretch. If there was ever a time that you're you know, 0-4, looking at 0-5, and, and you've got all this time, I was like, this is, this is the time to do it. And then they won that game, and I was like, I swear to God, if they if that one thing throws this off, at all and then they they went and pulled the trigger on and i was like yes oh they're gonna do it (laughs) yeah it doesn't help that they have 10 giveaways uh (laughs) this season which is uh historical to say the least so i'm on the trub chub chain train um sign me up for him and deontay thompson if anybody's taking hardcore flyers on wide receivers he had something like nine targets the last time they both started so uh, I think he had nine targets last week even. So that's someone that you may be able to pick up before your, your league mates do. Yeah, but buy in me, on that guy. Yeah, call me crazy. I think I think the Bears stand a good chance to win on Monday Night Football. It just has all the ingredients for one of those games that you could see the young rookie quarterback coming out and winning because here's, here's Minnesota reeling from injury. They still have their backup quarterback in, and then you have the debut of this young hot gunslinger in Mitchell Trubisky uh, that's Chicago's last hope. So um, I'm not going to say <clears throat> they will win, but I'm just saying don't be surprised if Chicago pulls this one off on Monday night. So, Brandon, uh, good luck on the move. Thank you so much again for uh, stopping by on this Fantasy Wednesday, and uh, I look forward to reading what you've got for us next. All right. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Take care. All right. See you. That was, once again, Brandon Raper from Team Fan Show, and he is moving from Illinois to Florida, so I appreciate, uh, obviously, his time is very valuable. Valuable fantasy advice. You can follow him on Twitter, at SMO Brandon. And with that, we've got a Butt Fumble Award to give away after this last commercial break. We'll be back with more of the Fan Show after this. This is The Sheet. 
Gets me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw that Scott hates him. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns. 4,900 total yards. I know y'all like that, but I got to run. And only in Alabama that could happen, I have to say. They're so good. Man, they would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision-based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness. Give it to him. Kudos. I'm clapping like a golfer. Very good, Johnny. I'm proud of you. Wow. You guys agree on something again? I'm very impressed. Have you ever had a bad week? You know, just you walk outside, step in a puddle. Like right when you walk outside, I mean, how's it a puddle right outside the house? Are you, you stand on the curb and somebody drives by and splashes water up on you? Or it's just raining on you, not anyone else? I, I will tell you, before you go any further, I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. Here, listen to the sheet, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports, and you'll get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. This is Nick Ficarelli, the mad scientist of sports. Join me and Dr. D. Derek Jones live every Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific, for the mad scientist sports lab. The big into which... The experiments are on the chalkboard, and the guest subjects will be rolling in. Mad Scientist Sports Lab, only on WBLZ Sports, where we got balls. Doug Peffer painting a pressure washing. He has over 30 years of painting experience. He's interior, exterior, commercial, or residential. Doug Peffer covers it all. Is your house looking ugh? We'll call on Doug. Doug Peffer painting a pressure washing. 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and get a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Check out Thursday Night Tailgate, where NFL legends live on. We bring you five NFL legends every week, sharing their stories and insights, plus our spotlight on the positive. Hear which players are doing great things in their communities. Now on WBLZ Sports Talk Radio and WBLZSports.com. That promo code the fan show and they will match your initial deposit up to 100 percent if you use the fan show as your promo code when you sign up and register today and my bookie.ag is of course built on the three r's reputation reliability and real fast payouts their reputation speaks for itself that's why i trust them here on the fan show they're incredibly reliable which is why they have the outstanding reputation and if you win it's your money you want it now so what better way to get it than somebody that practices really fast payouts check out mybookie.ag today and that will bring us to the moment you've all been waiting for each and every wednesday the coveted prestigious butt fumble award and your nominees this week by you fan nation were number one the redskins final play fail if you saw the monday night game you saw a great contest up until the redskins got the ball back for a last attempt what we thought would be a hail mary and then it turned into I, I want to call it a trick play, but in all honesty, it really there wasn't anything special about it. So they pitched the ball, and then they pitched it back, and it looked kind of like a flea flicker, but it was just it was a mess, and it failed miserably. Cousins get sacked, game over. Uh, nominee number two, Jay Cutler, wide receiver. There was no better Jay Cutler moment, and probably there won't be a better one for the Miami Dolphin Jay Cutler than what we saw <laughs> this last weekend as they line up in the Wildcat formation, the formation that Miami loves so near and dear to their hearts and oh so much. 
And instead of even getting into the wide receiver stance, you know, where you you bend one knee ever so slightly and you lean forward on it and then you've got your other leg kind of behind you and you're you're looking at the line of scrimmage, you're getting ready for the ball snap. He literally just stood there. Like he was on the sidelines, but he was actually out on the field in play. And when the ball was snapped, he continued to just stand there. And the play collapsed, failed miserably. But Jay Cutler, at his very best in Miami, hasn't missed a beat. Oh, thank you, Jay Cutler. And the next one, Antonio Brown's temper tantrum, which we saw Big Ben missed a wide open Antonio Brown and a water cooler had to suffer the consequences as he went back to the sideline, paced up and down it, and then kicked and threw a Gatorade water jug. Uh, number four is the Rivers meltdown. Philip Rivers getting no help in what could be one of his last seasons in the NFL and decided to take it out on everyone, including whoever was listening inside his helmet as he began screaming into his helmet about his frustrations on the field. So your nominees... Your vote and your winner with 45% of the vote goes to... Jay Cutler, wide receiver. Congratulations, Smoking Jay. Your <laughs> lack of any sort of initiative, leadership, or overall enthusiasm has made you a two-time Butt Fumble Award winner in all of Butt Fumble and Fan Show Lore. So congratulations, Jay Cutler. You earned it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do it for this Wednesday edition of the Fan Show. I thank you all for tuning in and listening, which there are so many flavors of Fan Show. There's the fanshow.com where you can listen live and have the episode archives at your disposal. Spreaker.com, where I broadcast to you live from within the Fan Cave studio. And then, of course, subscribe on iTunes and SoundCloud. And then you can catch the replays on WBLZ Sports. Download the app and catch this show along with so many other great shows involving sports, football, and nonsense. And soon, and by soon I mean within the next 72 hours, you can catch the fan show in all its football and nonsense glory on iHeartRadio. So subscribe to the podcast. Listen live if you can, follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and check out the Instagram and Snapchat. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, tune in, same fan show time, same fan show place, tomorrow night for an all-new episode. Best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez? Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.